Howdy, Stacks of Wax, Volume 14, go. For the uninitiated and first time viewers out there, Stacks of Wax is basically just a show where I go through and show off my record collection, A through Z. Last time we left off, um, I actually finished A through Z for the first time. Like we got all the way to Z and now we're back to A. I started the show about three years ago, so that means that when I first did the first episode that did a bunch of the A's and B's, I have added a lot to my collection since that time. That's kind of the whole point of this show and as to why we're gonna loop back around and start from the beginning again. So does that make sense to everybody? A and then B and then C and we're just gonna go through and then whenever we get done this whole round again, whenever it ends, I guess at that point, we'll just start a new at A. I think it's a fair plan. I think that it will uh, work out hopefully. Anyway, enough chit chat about that BS. Let's go right into the record, starting off not with the A's actually, but with the dot dot dots. And of course those dot dot dots mean that we are going to be talking about and you will know us by the Trail of Dead. This one right here, this is Madonna. Uh, this is the Record Store Day pressing that came out this past year. I think it's awesome. I love this album. If they hadn't repressed it or reissued it for Record Store Day, I uh, probably would have bought an original copy and it would not have been cheap. Well, I take it back. Maybe not like too expensive, but you know. You get what I'm saying. I was I was glad to have this new variant as opposed to getting a slightly uh, more used copy of this record. The special pressing comes on a yellow vinyl. Uh, when I went to go buy it at Record Store Day at my local record store, they had already run out because I was drinking the night before and was hungover and didn't wake up in time. So immediately after I realized that they didn't have it anymore, I uh, hopped on Discogs, waited a day or two, and then uh, bought this beauty. Love this album. Um, Listened to it nonstop for a long time. Saw them perform it live at South by Southwest in Austin in 2019, I believe. That was pretty badass. So yes, uh, Trail of Dead, we have another one right here. Ooh, man, they're all falling all over the place. That's not good. This one right here, of course, is Source Tags and Codes. Fantastic album, uh, an elusive pitchfork 10 out of 10. If that means anything to you guys, then maybe you should check this out. Pick this up at Repo Records in Philadelphia on South Street. Great little store if you've never been. Uh, yeah, Gatefold. It is a double LP. I believe the D side is just an etching, if I'm not mistaken. This is also all on black vinyl. Yeah, what a killer record, man. I mean, you know, Pitchfork 10 out of 10 aside or whatever, this album is so good. Yeah, it does, that's right, I was correct. Let's see if we can shine a little light on that. Looks pretty cool. Cool, works for me. Last but certainly not least, when it comes to talking about Trail of Dead, we have ourselves The Century of Self, another record store day pressing that came out this year. Like I said, I was disappointed when I didn't see Madonna in there, but they did have this. Um, not my favorite of the Trail of Dead's discography by a long shot. Definitely better than the newer material that they're putting out because boy oh boy, not a fan. Figured, you know what, screw it, I'm already here. I'll pick this up, add it to the old collection. Um, it is a good record, don't get me wrong. It's just uh, when you have two mammoths in Source Tags and Codes and Madonna, I mean, it's kind of hard to... Uh, Kind of hard to live up to that, you know what I mean? This is a Gatefold double LP. It's blue, if you couldn't tell already. And you know what else is blue? Da ba dee, da ba da. It's the vinyl itself. It's a nice dark blue, but still kind of see-through. I don't know. I know how to describe these freaking things. That's not my job. I don't do that. All right, so that will wrap up the Trail of Dead that I own. I mean, I do have some seven inches that we've covered in other videos, but still, those are the uh, the LPs that I own. And then let's uh, let's reach down here into the abyss and what what's that? Adolescence self-titled LP. Great record. Bought it for cheap uh, back during my days that I would order stuff on Amazon. So that means I bought this like three or four years ago at this point. Uh, don't do that, kids. Mr. Bezos doesn't need your money. Uh, yeah, fantastic album if you've never heard it. I Hate Children, Kids of the Black Hole, L.A. Girl, Amoeba. Yeah, lovely color. Lovely, lovely, lovely blue. Now, it doesn't really match the uh, the actual record itself, but that's fine. I don't, doesn't need to be perfect. But yeah, man, just great early L.A. punk. Um, you can't go wrong with this record, seriously. I mean... I gotta listen to, this is one of those albums that you could just listen to all day long and be completely content because it varies enough, they're all catchy, they're all fun, just uh, I don't know, 
it's a fantastic album. If you don't own it, I personally think that it's a necessity to have, especially if you are into punk. Yeah, man, love this record. So good. Speaking of punk, we got uh, a much smaller band in comparison to Adolescence. I'll be all else failed here. Um, this is This Never Happened. Uh, they are a Philadelphia punk hardcore outfit, uh, so have you. This came out in 2005, if I'm not mistaken. They only have like three LPs, I think, and I think they're all like in the mid 2000s. Um, but they actually finally pressed this on vinyl. Uh, like, I just got into them, in all honesty, pretty recently, um, thanks to Hate56, uh, the guy who does all the hardcore videos of shows and stuff like that. He's a big fan of these guys, and uh, mentioned it on Twitter one day, found them, listened to this record, really liked it, decided, huh, I wonder if there is a vinyl pressing. And then, uh, yeah, I guess they just did a pressing for the first time, like, last year, so in 2021, I guess. Uh, very, very happy that they finally pressed this. I think that this is a criminally underrated band. I know they're no longer around, or I don't think at least. I don't think they're around anymore. Um, dude, check this shit out. This is the primo stuff right there. Hot diggity darn, this is a beautiful piece of wax. Yeah, they had a couple variants on their website as well. I decided to go with this one, but they had a cool like green one. I think it was a like, green and yellow, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know, uh, all else failed, this never happened. Great band, great album. Um, don't be surprised if I end up covering these guys on So You're Interested In at some point. I do have them uh, penciled in at a much later date. Great record, definitely recommend if you're into like hardcore, post-hardcore, especially like mid-2000s era, which I'm not, but this kind of breaks the the chain of what was kind of going on then, and that, that sound wasn't really my thing, but this definitely is in line with what I like, so uh, yeah, I recommend it. Tell you what, this is a big uh, day for artists that have multiple uh, records in my collection because we have ourselves a couple Alex G records. We got Rocket. Uh, which is actually was my introduction to Alex G back when this record came out. Uh, the song Proud, I adore. I love that song. I think this record's great. Finally picked it up um, because there's a certain video on the way in the next month. Wink, wink. That I'm actually filming immediately after this. Nudge, nudge. Uh, this just comes on black. Standard black. You know, nothing crazy. It's a nice gatefold though. Um, I love the, the watercolors on the back here, man. They look so good. I believe it's the same thing inside. Yeah, there it is. There it is, under the sea. Yeah, I guess uh, for those of you who don't know who Alex G is, singer songwriter, Philadelphia based, uh, used to go by Sandy Alex G and now it's just Alex G. But he has a long history of making some pretty awesome albums. Um, a pretty prolific discography, if you ask me. Um, and one of those is actually this live record here at Third Man. Um, I love this series. I try to buy almost all of these. I think that they're pretty darn neat. Um, this is actually the first Alex G record that I ended up buying. And uh, yeah, it's, it's great. It has a bunch of songs from Rocket on here. Um, but yeah, I just love the the style that they do of these things, just the simplicity of the cover, back cover, just artwork in general, the fact that it's recorded directly to Acetate at the Third Man Records in Nashville, I think. Is that right? Maybe. I can't remember. I'm an idiot. Uh, yeah, I was right. Nashville, Tennessee. It says it right here. Yeah. Recorded live to tape, which is pretty, uh, pretty freaking dope, if you ask me. Um, yeah. Great. Great album. Great live stuff. Yeah, next episode we'll get into a live, uh, Third Man Records live comedy album, which I believe is the only one that they've done. I don't know. I mean, Jack White, we can have our disagreements on as much as we want, and I'm fine with that because, you know, I don't particularly love the guy. But, uh, Third Man Records seems to be doing some pretty cool shit, and, uh, as long as they're supporting artists and all that, then I really don't have a problem with them. But back to Alex G, it's his latest record, God Save the Animals. I'm not going to speak too much on this record quite yet because uh, end of the year videos are coming up pretty soon. And let's just say this will be mentioned. Um, and not just one, but multiple videos. I think that, that is a, a fair assumption. But yeah, I uh, love it. It's got the gold lettering up here. It's uh, very nice. This is the indie exclusive or the indie retail store, whatever the hell they call it. It's all bullshit to me, but whatever. As long as uh, they're supporting local record stores, I guess it's okay. Yeah, gatefold, 
inside there. And then this record, especially this variant, comes on clear, which personally I hate. I don't like clear records. I will stand by that decision probably for the rest of my life. I think that that is a, uh, not a take that I will change uh, my opinion on. I think it looks like shit. I think you can't tell where the record grooves break. So then all of a sudden, if you're actually trying to like just play a particular song, you're freaking searching. Uh, I don't know. I think there's, I think it's a lame excuse for a quote unquote uh, colored variant or whatever. Um, I would have much rather bought this in like the, the super limited blue that they had, but I just didn't. And you know, it is what it is, but yeah, clear records, they suck. I will never change my mind about that. I can do the dumb Steven Crowder meme, change my mind or whatever the fuck that idiot does. Next up though, Aphex Twin Collapse EP. This came out in 2017, 2018? 2018. Um, love it, man. I need to get more Aphex Twin in my discography. I don't particularly listen to him too much, but um, I do think that whenever I do listen to his stuff, I enjoy it. So it's one of those things where it's like, well, if I can find it for like a good price, I'll pick it up. I mean, I'll definitely spin it, enjoy it. I do particularly like spinning electronic records as of late and I don't have many of them, um, which is why I actually picked this up because it was fairly cheap. I should have gotten the limited silver color. I remember I saw that years ago when this record first came out, but I didn't. Uh, I snoozed and I lose it, which, you know, shit happens. Yeah, uh, Avex Twin Collapse EP, great. I think it's just four tracks, maybe five. It's one of the two. Uh, but yeah, wonderful little EP here from the legend himself. Yeah, I need more Aphex Twin. That's the verdict on that one. Another genre that I definitely need to focus more on buying, uh, it's jazz. Now, granted, this is a hip hop record. Uh, this is Sour Soul with Bad Bad Not Good and Ghostface Killa. Um, but it is obviously very jazz influenced considering Bad Bad Not Good is doing all the instrumentation behind it. And as a jazz fusion outfit, um, they make jazz. That took a dead end. Yeah, man, this album's awesome. Um, it's really good. Glad I finally picked it up. Uh, yeah, man, I need more Bad Bad Not Good and I need a ton more Ghostface in my collection. That is uh, certainly a blemish in my, uh, in my collecting habits. God, if I can get a cheap copy of Supreme Clientele or Fish Scale, it's over. It's over for you fools. But yeah, Ghostface, uh, Bad Bad Not Good, you might see... Oh, you just saw, I think, the Ghost... No, wait. Ghostface comes out soonish. Shh. And uh, Bad Bad Not Good's on the way. Another hip-hop record here. That would be The Plugs I Met 2 by Benny the Butcher. Uh, production by Harry Fraud. Features the uh, exclusive vinyl track Thanksgiving at the very end here, which is a good track. I mean, you know, nothing nothing out of the uh, out of the woodwork. It is Bunny the Butcher we're talking here, so I mean, you're bound to have something good. So many of the Griselda records go for a ridiculous amount of money because they sell them that way, and I think that's awesome for them. It's bad for me because I don't have that type of money, and I don't really feel like spending that type of money. But yeah, no, uh, finally, glad I picked this up. At my local record store, I almost picked up the plugs I met, uh, the first one, yesterday. But I decided against it, and I'm sure that eventually I will cave and go get it. But yeah, on standard black, uh, sounds great. Listened to it not too long ago. This was a, definitely a more recent pickup for me. Um, love Benny, love Griselda. Harry Fraud's pretty cool too. Some good, uh, some good hip hop for you there. Last but not least, also you might have noticed we did more than ten on this episode because, for better or for worse, my buying habits uh, have gotten worse. And by worse, I mean my bank account is being drained right now. Goodness gracious! Um, so that means we're gonna try to do like twelve to thirteen records when I do these videos now, and they will definitely be coming out like once a month and stuff like that. So. I'll be on top of like actually when I buy stuff and then showing it off and crap like that and not limiting myself just to 10. Maybe we'll have an episode where there's like 15 records. Who knows? I, I, I don't know. At this rate, if I were to continue doing it this way um, or the way that I initially planned, we'd be at like all said and done. By the time I like finally caught up to myself, dude, we'd have like 60 episodes all together. And I mean like that's like way in the future and stuff. Like I don't have 600 records right now, but like that number is going to quickly grow. And I think that it would be foolish of me to limit myself 
uh, to just 10 in one video when clearly I could up that to just a couple more, knock them out and not have 800,000 videos on my channel. Uh, that'd be kind of rad. But anyway, we are going to finish off here. This is Big Black Songs About Fucking. Uh, cover Your Ears, a little late on that. Dude, what a killer album. I mean, first of all, Big Black, great group. Um, I love this record. Once they just did this repress not too long ago, immediately hopped in the car and drove to my record store. Oh my God, no second thoughts. Um, yeah, man, I love this album. Um, I believe that it's just on black. I can double check. If you've never heard this album, go check out the song Fish Fry and um, thank me later. Yeah, it's just on black. Everything's falling apart in here. All good. But yeah, that, uh, that will do it for this edition of Stacks of Wax. Anyway, I would like to thank you very much for watching, especially if you made it all the way to the end here. Boy, oh boy, your life must be boring. But yeah, like I said, we'll be doing these once a month, probably close to-ish that number. We'll see, working out the kinks right now. But uh, yeah, schedule's been made. We'll see what happens. All right. If you'd like to see more from this channel, be sure to subscribe for more videos just like this every month-ish, uh, along with shows like uh, So You're Interested In, a show where I break down an artist's discography, show off uh, really where I think you should be starting off in their catalog. That way you get a good basis and good feeling of what the artist is like. And then you can like kind of dive in from there and differentiate and get real deep into the nitty gritty B-sides and rarities and demos and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, that uh, that will do it. Um, be sure to go support your local record store. If there's anything that I cannot stress enough, it's that especially hopefully seeing this video like gets you want to go buy records and stuff. Um, make sure to support local artists in your area as well. And yeah, until I see you next time, happy listening. Oh shit, hold the phone, hold the phone. If you have any of these records, uh, let me know in the comments below. If you want any of these records, let me know in the comments below. I'm not going to give them to you, but you know, you can let me know that you want them. Um, yeah, that's it. All right. Goodbye. See you next time. Say la vie. Um, eat shit.